One of the advantages of staying at Farakunku is that day trips can be arranged with local guides to other key birding sites. Our guide was Ibrima Niger, who runs BirdLife Africa tours. Our first visit was to the famous Abuko Nature Reserve, near the capital Banjul. Although it protects some of the Gambia's last remaining riverine gallery forest, the reserve seems to be living off its reputation too much, and the birding was good, but not spectacular. The bamboo pool near the entrance produced the first western plantain eater of the day. Plus a small party of blue-bellied rollers. Close to the pool is the Darwin Field Station, which overlooks a different area of the wetland. From the veranda, a broad-billed roller showed well. Given their coloration, the alternative name of cinnamon roller is quite fitting. There was also an obscured view of a palm nut vulture. A preening female western red-billed hornbill a distant juvenile greater honey guide, aged by its conspicuous yellow throat, and fairly close to the buildings, a violet turaco, a species that's fairly common in the forests, but often hard to see well. Tracks extend further into the reserve, past impressive termite mounds, and trails of army ants. Clearings in the forest revealed new species, including this calling male African pied hornbill. There was also this preening blue spotted wood dove. Yellow billed kite. The all yellow bill, the best way to distinguish them from the Eurasian black kites which winter here. A family of green wood hoopoos. and a trio of lovely swallow-tailed bee-eaters, typically found in more lightly wooded habitat. Green vervet monkeys seem to be lying in ambush by the path. They're the commonest primate in the Gambia, and the most used to human contact. A few red colobus monkeys were rather warier. In thicker cover we found this superb African pygmy kingfisher. A little green bull, fairly common here. An immature brown-throated wattle eye. And this female red-bellied paradise flycatcher. The sight of kettling hooded vultures indicated that we were near to the reserve's scruffy zoo. There's not much to see here, 
although the vultures do come down to feed on the goat carcasses cut up for the zoo's hyenas. The bare head and neck of the adults is usually a dull pink, but flushed with more colour at the anticipation of prime goat offcuts. It was only a short drive from Abuko to Lamin Lodge on the banks of the Gambia River and a very pleasant break for lunch. From the lodge it was back north of Abuko to the Lamin rice fields for the rest of the afternoon. Around the periphery of the fields we found a brown babbler, typically seen on a palm frond. a preening Senegal kukul. And a male splendid sunbird feeding on sap where local villagers had tapped a palm tree. The rice paddies held a good selection of wetland and open country birds. Being not far from the coast, a few western reef herons were present. We did also see a black heron in flight only, smaller and not dissimilar to the reef herons, but darker plumaged and lacking the obvious white throat. There were also squacko herons. Waders included spur-winged plovers now usually and more appropriately named spur-winged lapwings as they are members of the Vanellus or lapwing genus. A wood sandpiper. A green sandpiper. And a flock of Senegal thick knees. African morning doves came down to drink where the thick knees were. They are dry country specialists, but nonetheless more easily found near water. A pair of venaceous doves nearby were distinctly smaller and darker. When the morning doves perched up in bushes, they were joined by a flock of village weavers. Kotu Creek and its nearby sites is another of the Gambia's famous birding areas, near Banjul. We visited in the afternoon, starting at the pool by the Padala Park Hotel. On the open water were a family of white-faced whistling ducks, the three juveniles having not yet developed the head pattern of the adults. Around the margins were an African morning dove, black winged stilts with two juveniles and an adult, and long tailed cormorants, including this immature bird, and an older sub adult. This is another species with two common names the other being reed cormorant. Alongside the pool, the casino cycle track runs past rice fields dotted with palm trees, with roosting yellow-billed and migrant black kites. It leads to a series of marshy pools by the entrance road to the Palm Beach Hotel. Here, juvenile African jacanas hid amongst the rushes. A squacko heron was a little more obliging, and the black-headed heron stood out in the open. 
a Malachite kingfisher also put in an appearance. From here it was a short walk to Kotu Bridge, a renowned meeting point for birders and guides. From the bridge there are views up and down Kotu Creek. A cooperative pied kingfisher flaunted itself really well here. Whereas this male giant kingfisher also showed well, but in much more difficult light. Later, another male was seen with a juvenile male, here on the right. The juvenile spent most of the time trying to break off twigs above its head. Along the creek were a selection of waders, including Senegal thick knees, common sandpiper, and a flock of African wattled lapwings. There were also spur-winged lapwings, a wimbrel, and a common redshank. plus western reef herons, a grey heron, and a showy but mostly motionless hammercock. Beyond the creek lies the Fayara golf course, with its beautiful swallowtail bee-eaters Hide wing swallows, Abyssinian roller, and a juvenile African harrier hawk. South of the golf course, the Kotu sewage ponds are another good, if rather ugly, sight for water birds. Western cattle egrets shared the unpleasant shallows with western reef herons, the latter including a juvenile in the middle of this group. Plus black winged stilts. Along the embankments were common sandpipers. Wood sandpipers. and a couple of squabbling green sandpipers. A pair of ring-necked parakeets were feeding in the weedy fields by the ponds. Back at Kotu Bridge, we managed obscured views of a golden-tailed woodpecker a scarce bird in the Gambia. To the southeast of Banjul and near to the Gambia River, we visited Farasuto Forest, a reserve managed by the local community. The site has a stakeout for white spotted fluff tail, which we saw but I wasn't able to film. The owls here also eluded us, but there was plenty more to enjoy. Along the approach road we found this Eurasian hoopoe, a winter visitor, differing from the African form by being paler and with less white in the secondaries. In the same tree was this male bearded barbet. A female would show black spots along the flanks. They're fairly common, if not always easy to see well. Along the forest trails, a red-bellied paradise flycatcher eventually showed well. It was presumably a young male, as despite the rufous nape and lack of any tail streamers, there are still definite patches of white in the wings. Grey-headed bristlebill was another species we finally got good views of. In a small glade, 
a male African pied hornbill perched quietly in the open. And a yellow bill shrike perched in typically obtrusive fashion. From Farasuto Forest, we headed southeast to Sotokoi and explored an area of open cultivation. A good range of species included this purple roller. A pied winged swallow. A foraging African grey woodpecker. This red-winged warbler in its brown and non-breeding plumage. A brief singing cysticola. A pair of little bee-eaters. One with a recently caught bee. And a singing black-crowned chagra.